Hi, my name is April Kriebel, and today I'll be presenting on non-negative matrix factorization in a great single-cell multi-omic data sets with partially overlapping features. Single-cell sequencing technologies are expanding in their capabilities at an unprecedented rate, and this is giving us an incredible opportunity to be able to define cellular profiles. Cellular profiles can be defined by a couple different measures. You have your epigenetic measures, which we can define using single cell ATAC data and DNA methylation data. We also have transcriptomic measures, which we can usually get using single cell RNA sequencing data. And we can further define a cell by its spatial location, which is usually derived via its spatial transcriptomics data. So the real question of the single cell space is how we can use all of the information gathered from these distinct modalities and use it to define a cell type. Current methods try to achieve data set integration over shared features. For example, methods such as Surratt, Harmony, and Liger integrate data sets but are capable of doing so only across shared features. In the center, you will see a schematic of Liger, our current algorithm. For each experiment, you can have a variable number of cells, as having identical number of cells is not a requirement. What is required, however, is that these datasets share the same number of features, or genes. After subsetting the datasets to include the same number of genes, we can perform matrix decomposition. We then achieve our HI matrices, which are indicative of our cell factor loadings, our VI matrices, which are for our dataset specific metagenes, and our W matrix, which includes our shared metagenes. However, all the previous algorithms that I mentioned require that we subset the features that we use in our data integration, often resulting in the discarding of pertinent information. For example, when we are integrating single nucleus ATAC seq data and single cell RNA sequencing data, we typically do this by summing the ATAC data into gene relevant regions. However, this means that we discard the information from between genes or in these intergenic regions shown here in yellow. When integrating targeted spatial transcriptomic data and single cell RNA sequencing data, we typically must subset the single cell RNA sequencing data, which usually has more genes than the targeted spatial transcriptomics data, and we have to discard all of those unshared genes. We have the same problem when we integrate spatial transcriptomic and dual omic data sets, except in this case, we are not only discarding the unshared genes, but also any information obtained from the single cell ATAC seq experiment. Lastly, when we are trying to integrate cross species data, such as mouse single cell RNA sequencing data and lizard single cell RNA sequencing data, we are limited to perform the integration across homologous genes. Therefore, our goal was to design an algorithm that was capable of including unshared features when integrating data sets. So just like we had before, our algorithm still performs matrix decomposition where HI are our cell factor loadings, VI are our data set specific metagenes, and W are our shared metagenes. However, we've also introduced the capabilities of including unshared features shown here in the PI matrices. By including these unshared features, we introduce a matrix space UI that allows the accommodation of unshared metagenes. These metagenes are incorporated in each iteration as we solve the optimization problem shown here at the bottom iteratively with block coordinate descent. Importantly, the incorporated U matrix assumes nothing about the relationship between the shared and unshared features, and this allows it to incorporate additional genes, intergenic features, as well as non-homologous genes that are found in cross-species analysis. In order to demonstrate our algorithm in practice, we used a spatial transcriptomic data set and we integrated it with a single cell RNA sequencing data set. For our unshared features, we used UI and MF to include an additional 2,775 genes that were present in the single cell RNA sequencing data set, but were not present in the targeted spatial transcriptomic set. We also introduced a vectorized lambda parameter of 10, 1, more heavily penalizing the star map data. You can see here on the left 
the result of INMF, which was not capable of including the unshared genes. And on the right, UINMF, our new algorithm that is able to incorporate the additional genes from the single cell RNA sequencing data. And you can see that we witness a distinct improvement using UINMF. We also wanted to be able to show quantitatively the advantage of using UINMF. In order to do this, we use the original drop viz labels as ground truth, and this is because these single cell RNA sequencing labels are high enough quality to be able to be used in cellular annotations. On the left, we have purity, and on the right, we have the ARI scores across three different algorithms. In blue, we have INMF, in yellow, we have Surat, and in gray, we have our new algorithm, UINMF. And you can see that UINMF offers statistically significant increase in purity and ARI scores across a variety of Whovian resolutions shown on the x-axis. In order to validate that the new UINMF labels had biological relevance, we took the new labels and we inserted them back into their spatial context. And after doing so, we see a recapitulation of what we would expect from known biological truths. For instance, in the bottom left, you can see the layering of the excitatory neurons. You can see most interiorly, we have layer six, and as we work outward, there's an increase um, as we move into layer two, three. Additionally, we see an expected prevalence of CGE inner neurons in the cranial regions, indicated here in purple. We see a thick band of ocal dendrocytes that we know compose the white matter of the brain. And we also see that the blood-brain barrier pictured here in red is distinguished by the endothelial tip cells, all of which correspond to what we know is biologically true. Our next goal was to demonstrate that UINMF is capable of including measures of cellular identity besides genes. In order to do this, we integrated a targeted spatial transcriptomic data set with a dual omics data set. And in this case, the advantage was that we not only had the unshared genes, but we also had single cell ATAC sequencing data that was not previously able to be used in the data set integration. And so by using both of these unshared features, 1,431 regions of highly variable chromatin and 2,688 unshared genes, we are able to incorporate an additional 4,119 unshared features into this data set integration. You can see the results presented here at the bottom left using all of the cells. However, we also wanted to check for cell type correspondence with the originally published labels. In the center, we have only the SNR-seq cells colored by their original labels. And then on the far right, we have the only the star map cells colored by their original labels. And you can see a strong correspondence. For instance, if you look at the oligodendrocyte populations here and here, the inner neuron populations here and here, and the excitatory cells being grouped here. We can see that there's a strong cell type correspondence between the two data sets. Again, we wish to demonstrate that quantitatively that UINMF outperforms INMF and Surat. For this analysis, INMF and Surat were only capable of including 944 shared genes and include none of the unshared genes or the single cell ATAC peaks. Shown in gray is the UINMF algorithm's performance, shown in yellow is Surat's performance, and shown in blue is INMF's performance. Again, on the x-axis, we have Luvian resolution, and on the left, we have the purity scores, and on the right, we have ARI. And you can see that across purity and ARI, UINMF outperforms both Surat and INMF. To confirm the biological validity of UINMF, we placed the UINMF labels in their original biological context. In doing so, we were able to validate the expected ordering of the excitatory neurons. We see that the white matter region is composed mostly of opal dendrocytes, and we see that the outer cell populations are endothelial and moral cells, all of which reflect biological known findings. Here we wish to demonstrate the use of UINMF to successfully incorporate non-homologous genes in cross-species dataset integrations. In this case, we used a lizard and a mouse single cell RNA sequencing datasets. As shared features, we used homologous genes, of which we ended up having 1,979. And then for our unshared features, we used the non-homologous genes relevant to a single species. 
For the lizard, we had 166 non-homologous genes, and for the mouse, we had 1,110 non-homologous genes. And you can see here a UMAP picturing the alignment that we achieved using the UINMF algorithm. You can see that we had good alignment despite the data sets coming from two different species. In order to confirm appropriate cell type correspondence between the two data sets, we graphed first only the mouse cells with their original labels and then only the lizard cells with their original labels. And you can see, for instance, if we look at the microglia populations in both the mouse and the lizard, the inner neuron populations in the mouse, and then in the inhibitory neurons also in the lizard, we can see that we end up getting very good cell type correspondence between the two species. Lastly, we wish to compare the purity and ARI scores for INMF, which uses only homologous genes, and UINMF, which is able to use both the homologous and the non-homologous genes. We used both the originally published mouse and lizard labels as ground truth, and we looked at the algorithm's performance across a variety of Louvian resolutions. You can see that we were able to achieve statistically significant improvement in all but the lizard purity measures, and we believe that this is likely the result of the lack of the annotations for the lizard genome. If you recall, we were only able to include an additional 166 genes for the lizard, and we believe this to be the reason for the non-significant result for the lizard genome. With that, I would like to thank all the members of the Welch Lab, without whom this would not be possible, our funding sources, and if you'd like to check out our GitHub, the UINMF algorithm can be found there. Thank you.